Another type of additive that we are going to talk about is so-called plasticizers. Okay, plasticizers are small molecules, most likely liquid molecules that uh, people would add sometimes purposefully, sometimes just uh, by naturally sitting in air, absorb moisture. Small molecules could be water, could be some other molecules that you added in small amount to polymers to plastics or thick particle paste to do what? To reduce the so-called uh, glass transition temperature, Tg, or to cause the polymer to pack less dense. The polymers pack less dense because you have small molecules disrupt the, the packing and reduce the in between one was interaction between the poly polymer molecules and which help soften the polymer make the polymer behave less rigid more plastic easier to shape the word plasticity means when you apply a stress the material would permanently change shape or permanently deform so by adding these types of small molecules, quite often liquid, into the polymer, we make the polymer molecule pack less dense. And the, we can imagine the small molecule as kind of a lubricant in between the large polymer molecules. And those small molecules would allow the polymers to be soft, to slide against each other, to change shape so that we have better so-called flexibility or plasticity. Okay, and it effectively, plasticizer effectively reduces what? Tg or glass transition temperature of the polymers. Okay, here we show an example of effect of relative humidity. In this case, the small molecule would just be humidity, the small molecule would just be water molecules. Okay, as a result, the soft water content and the plasticizer, water as plastic plasticizer for PVA, polyvinyl alcohol film, which is the polymer mechanical property. I'm going to show the table, but again, first look at the horizontal top line, 40% RH, that means 40% of so-called relative humidity, 60% relative humidity, 80% relative humidity. So which means for a polymer, you put that uh, material in different uh, environment with different controlled humidity. A, as a result, you would have a change in what? Moisture content in the polymer film. And as a result, the mechanical properties, which we are going to talk about one by one. So naturally, the higher the relative humidity in the environment, the higher the moisture content in your polymer. Make sense? It's just the environment has more moisture and the moisture, this is a PVA, it's a polar kind of a polar group, side group for the polymer chain, so it likes water. And the higher the relative humidity, the more moisture the polymer contains. But then looks at these so-called tensile strengths tensile strength. It means the highest stress level beyond which the material would fail, would fracture. And as we see, the more moisture content, the tensile strength become lower. The material become less stronger, weaker. Make sense? Material can sustain less and less stress. But at the same time, the so-called elongation at ra rupture or fra fracture, elongation, is a mechanical property that tells you, okay, how much of a plastic deformation the material would have before it fractures or breaks. And what we see is the higher the moisture content, the much higher the so-called elongation at the rupture. Elongation, initially certain lengths, now elongate, become longer before it fractures, right? And clearly, the higher the moisture content, it becomes a lot more plastic, a lot more ductile. And Young's modulus, it's kind of a measure of materials capability to resist the stress in terms of 
elastic deformation. And also we observed as we have more and more moisture in the polymer, the material elastic Young's modulus or rigidity become a lot lower, which means for the same stress, even if we are in the elastic or reversible deformation, it also deform a lot. Means the plastics become much softer, right? Much more elastic. Okay, so that's plasticizer, the effect. And then I'm going to show some uh, additional points about the features. Typically, they are liquid with low vapor pressure at the at your molding temperature. At your molding temperature, okay. Generally, we mold for most ceramic paste to be mold at room temperature. And water vapor is okay, I guess. Water can be combined with water or other solvent. And most plasticizers also increases water absorption. If you are using a non-water, uh, non-aqueous uh, plasticizer, and the common plasticizer, we have this table, and for each of the plasticizer that we listed here, we have melting point, melting temperature. Okay, the temperature going from solid, crystalline, to free-flowing liquid. We have the boiling point for that uh, plasticizer molecule. Okay. Or material going from liquid to vapor and then the molecular uh, typical molecular weight and we listed of course for water and uh, boiling point 100 degrees C zero so which means we have between 0 to 100 of course if we are molding at too high temperature the water will not be very good because your paste would what if we are molding you have to yeah your paste dry up too quickly which is not good so if you have to mold it just Thing. At higher temperature, you probably want to choose something like uh, acetylene glycol, right? Or some other stuff that gives you much higher boiling point, which means at a higher molding temperature, it doesn't dry too fast. Make sense? But as as what we see here, this so-called glycol, glycol, or whatever, these types of molecules quite often has a lot of OH group in them. And because they have a lot of OH groups in them, they also have the tendency to what? The, these type of plastic also have a tendency to also absorb water. So that's why we say can be combined. Often they have the same tendency with water because these polymer has a lot of OH group in them. Okay.